CIET NCERT presents audio book of EVS for class 5 entitled Looking Around 5. This is lesson 9. Up you go. From page 76 to page 86. Let's listen to lesson 9. Page 76. Lesson 9. Up you go. 2nd February 1984. Mountaineering Camp Nehru Institute of Mountaineering Uttarkashi We were at the mountaineering camp and were very excited 20 of us were teachers from Kendriya Vidyalayas There were other women from banks and other institutions Today was the second day of the camp In the morning as I got out of bed and put my foot down I screamed in pain I remembered yesterday's 26 km walk with the heavy rucksack on my back. I was afraid to go back to that steep climb and the rough narrow path. With tears in my eyes, I started walking slowly towards the room of Brigadier Gyan Singh, the director of our adventure course. I was thinking of what I would say to excuse myself from that day's trek. Suddenly, I hear his deep voice from behind. "Madam, What are you doing here at breakfast time? Hurry up, otherwise you will have to trek on an empty stomach. Sir, uh, sir, I could not say any more. You have come to tell me that you have blisters on your feet, that you cannot walk, isn't it? Uh, yes, sir. Ah, that's nothing new. Now get ready quickly. I hung my head and rushed back to get ready. I had just turned when I heard his voice again. Listen madam you will lead group number 7 you will have to help any member who has difficulty climbing the mountain you have already been told about the responsibilities of a group leader in the mountains tell a have you ever seen the mountains have you also climbed a mountain when and where b how far have you walked at one time how far can you walk imagine What do you think about the paths on the mountains? Draw a picture. A big responsibility. I started thinking about what a leader must do. A. Help others in carrying their bags. B. Let the group go ahead and keep to the last. C. Help those who cannot climb properly. D. Find a good place to stop and rest. E. Look after those who are not well. F. Arrange for food for the group. The most important thing is to be ready to be punished even when someone else may have made a mistake. I realized that there was a special kind of discipline here. I wondered whether the camp will still be fun. Page 77. Group number 7. Group number 7 included girls from Assam. Manipur, Mizoram, Meghalaya and Nagaland. I was the only teacher from Kendriya Vidyalaya in this group. I was happy to meet my new group members. Most of them could not speak Hindi well. I still feel bad that after being together for 21 days, I could not talk even once with Kondonbi from Mizoram. She spoke only Mizo, but in our hearts we grew close to each other. Tell A. What do you think about the responsibilities of a group leader? B. How would you feel if you were made a leader in such a camp? C. What does a monitor in your class have to do? D. Would you like to be the class monitor? Why? Crossing the river. 5th February 1984. We got vitamin C, iron tablets and hot chocolate milk with our breakfast. These were given for strength. and to keep us warm in the cold every morning there would be a medical checkup we tied our bandages and counted the days left after an 8 km trek we reached a river there was a thick rope tied across the river from one bank to the other the rope was tightly fixed to pegs or pitons on both the sides i was feeling nervous I started thinking what would happen if the rope came out. I was trying to estimate how wide the river was. Page 79. 
Our instructor tied a rope around his waist and put a sling, type of hook, in it. He then put the sling on the thick rope tied across the river. Walking through the icy water, he went to the other side. No one was ready to step into the fast-flowing river. Everyone was pushing each other to go first. I stood last in the line, hoping that no one would see me. Just then, our instructor came near me with the sling and rope in his hands. I knew there was no escape now. I was ready, but did not have the courage. Sir could guess my fears. He called out loudly, Three cheers for Sangeeta, madam! And before I knew it, someone had gently pushed me into the water. I felt as if my feet were frozen. I started shivering. My teeth were chattering. I caught hold of the rope and started putting my feet firmly on the riverbed. As I walked further in, the river got deeper and slowly the water reached up to my neck. In the middle of the river, I lost my balance and started slipping. I was so scared and felt so cold that the rope slipped from my hands. I started shouting for help. I was sure I would be carried away by the river. But no, I found that I was tied with the rope to the sling. Hold the rope! Hold the rope! I could hear the shouts. I somehow managed to get hold of the rope and pull myself forward. Slowly, with some courage, I reached the river bank. I felt a special kind of happiness as I came out of the water. Happiness on finishing a challenging task. Now, standing on the bank, I was calling out to the others to hold the rope tightly. I knew that this confidence was a result of facing a challenge with courage. Page 80 Find out and write A. What kinds of tools are needed for climbing mountains? B. Have you ever seen a hook and rope being used for anything else? Where? C. What else can we use if we want to cross a river in the mountains? D. Why do we need extra energy on the mountains? E. Have you ever heard of anyone who has done something adventurous? What? F. Have you ever done anything adventurous? If yes, tell your class. Write about it in your own words. Rock Climbing 10th February 1984 We had to climb 15 kilometers to reach Tekla village. It was at a height of 1600 meters. Our rucksacks had all that we may need. Food packets, water bottle, rope, hook, plastic sheet, diary, torch, towel, soap, wind sheeter, whistle, glucose, jaggery, chana and some other snacks. We could see fruits and vegetables growing in the steppe fields. We saw Colonel Ram Singh standing on a 90 meters high flat rock with pegs and ropes. We had been told to first observe the rock carefully and identify holes, places where we can put our hands and feet. Today I was not going to back out. I stood first in the line. Our instructor tied a rope around his waist. Page 81 He put the sling and held the thick rope which was hanging. He started climbing as if he was running up. I also put my sling. But as I took my first step, I slipped. And there I was, swinging from the rope. Keep your body at an angle of 90 degrees while climbing. I heard. Keep your back straight. Do not bend. Keeping this in mind, I imagined the rock as flat ground and started to climb up. Again, while coming down, we had to use the rope in a special way, called rappling. I did this with the same fearlessness. Tell. A. Have you ever climbed a tree? How did you feel? Were you scared? Did you ever fall? B. Have you ever seen someone climb a small wall? What do you think is the difference between climbing a wall and climbing a high rock? A funny incident. 14th February 1984 It was evening. Khandonbi was feeling hungry. We did not have anything to eat. She jumped over the fence and got into a field. 
she quickly plucked two big cucumbers and came back. Just then a woman came from behind and caught hold of her bag. She started saying something to Khondonbi in her own language. We could not understand what she was saying. Khondonbi was trying to explain in her Mizo language, which we could not understand. Page 82 I tried to explain in Hindi, but neither of them could understand it. Finally, I folded my hands to say that we were sorry. By then, our group had gone far ahead. It was already dark. I thought we had lost our way. Now we were really scared. We could not see anything, even with our torches. I started sweating, even though it was cold. I tightly held Khandonbi's hand. I called out loudly, Where are you all? Can you hear me? My voice echoed in the mountains. We both started to whistle loudly and flashed our torches. Probably the group had noticed that we were missing. We heard some whistles at a distance. I understood the signal. We held each other's hand tightly and waited. Khandonbi felt that we should keep talking. She started singing a Mizo song loudly. After some time, we saw them coming towards us. At last, we were with the group again. Tell. A. Is there anyone in your class whose language you do not understand? Or who does not understand yours? What do you do in such a case? B. Have you ever lost your way? What did you do then? C. Why do you think Khandon B would have sung loudly? D. Have you ever seen someone doing something special to get over their fear? What and when? Try. Ask your friend for a book without speaking. Try to explain something to the class in the same way. A special guest. 15th February 1984 After dinner, we met a special guest. Bachendri Pal. She had just been selected as a part of the team to climb Mount Everest. Page 83 She had come to seek the blessings of Brigadier Gyan Singh. It was a happy evening. We all were singing. Bachendri also joined us in singing and dancing on the famous Pahadi song. Bedu pako baramasa kafal pako chaita meri chela at that time, we had no idea that Bachendri would become the first Indian woman to reach Mount Everest and create history. Camp in the Snow 18th February 1984 We were standing at a height of 2,134 meters. We were to spend the night here. Everyone was busy trying to put up the tent. We used double-layered plastic sheets for the tent and for the ground. The air between the layers would help to keep us warm. We put in the pegs and began to put up the tent. As we tied it from one side, the wind flew the tent from the other side. After quite a lot of pulling and tugging, we managed to get the tent up. Then we dug a drain around the tent. We were feeling very hungry. We collected some firewood and stones to make a chulha and cooked some food. After the meal, we collected all the waste in a bag to clean the campsite. Soon, we got into our sleeping bags. I was not sure if I would be able to sleep in it. Would it be comfortable? Would I not feel cold? But the bags were filled with soft feathers, which help in keeping us warm. We were all very tired. So very soon, we fell asleep. Teacher's Note The children can be encouraged to learn the languages spoken by their friends, this would help them appreciate and respect other languages. Page 84 The next morning we woke up and found that it was snowing. White, soft, fluffy snowflakes were gently falling. Wow! It was so beautiful! The plants, the trees, the grass and the mountains. Everything looked white. Today we were to climb higher to 2,700 meters. We walked carefully on the snow with the help of sticks. It was difficult because we kept slipping. By afternoon, we had reached snow-covered mountains. 
we enjoyed throwing snowballs at each other and making a big snowman last day at camp 21st february 1984 we were getting ready for the campfire each group presented a program we were enjoying telling jokes and laughing singing and dancing around the campfire soon it was midnight brigadier gyan singh got up and called me i thought oh no what i have done this time but when sir announced my name for the best performance award i stood still he blessed me and tears of joy rolled down my face discuss a why do you think a drain was dug around the tent b besides mountaineering what are other activities that can be called adventurous why teachers note these pages of a diary are based on the real experiences of sangeeta arora she teaches in kendriya vidyalaya shalimar bagh delhi and is also a member of this evs textbook writing team page 85 imagine and write you are on a mountain how do you feel there what can you see what do you feel like doing there there is a story box on this page the title is alone on the mountain top a 12 year old girl living in the mountains was out on a school picnic she climbed a mountain peak of 4000 meters with her friends the girls had done this for fun and adventure soon it was dark and they could not come down it was also cold and scary they were alone without any food and it was a long night this happened to bachendri pal played when she was a young girl bachendri grew up in nakuri village in the garhwal area of uttarakhand when she grew older she joined nehru institute of mountaineering uttarkashi her guide was brigadier gyan singh bachendri did very well in her training She started to train women in mountaineering courses. In 1984, Bachendri was selected as a team member to climb the Mount Everest. Snowstorm. There were 7 women in that 18 member team. On the night of 15th May, the team was very tired after having reached a height of 7300 meters. The team put up their tents and went to sleep. Around midnight they heard a loud sound and then a bang before they were fully awake the tent flew off and something very heavy hit them there was a terrible snowstorm bachendri was almost buried under the snow and was hurt on the head many of the team members were also injured the others used snow picks and axes to dig out those who had been buried under the snow The rest of the team members returned to base camp but Bachindri went ahead climbing slowly but steadily towards the peak It was 7 minutes past 1 o'clock in the afternoon of 23rd May when Bachindri Pal stepped onto the peak of 8900 meter high Mount Everest also called Sagarmatha in Nepal There was another team member with her There was no space for two people to stand on the top at the same time. One slip and they would fall straight down thousands of feet below. Bachindri and her teammate dug into the snow and pitched their axe firmly in the ice. Using this as a hook, they tied themselves to it with a rope. Only then two of them could stand there. She was shivering with cold but filled with the warmth of achievement. She bowed her head, pitched the national flag and took photographs. She spent 43 minutes on the highest peak in the world. Bachindri Pal became the first Indian woman and the fifth woman in the world to reach the peak of Mount Everest. Teachers note. Teachers can either make available the photographs or if possible the actual mountaineering equipment like sling pitons hunter shoes sleeping bag etc this will help discussion with children page 86 think a why did bachindri put up the indian flag on the peak b 
When have you seen our national flag being hoisted? Collect information of our national flag. C. Make groups of 6 to 8 children. Design a flag for your group. Explain why you chose that design. D. Have you seen the flag of any other country? Where? What we have learnt. Explain why it can be adventurous and challenging to climb a mountain. How would you prepare if you were to climb a mountain? What would you take with you? Write in your own words. Chapter 9 of total 22 chapters of the book Looking Around 5 ends here.